This is James's chili for this morning. Um, we've had it other ways, served other ways, um, but this is, I think, the best chili I've made. And the broth is about 50-50 apple juice, tomato juice, and um, I'll talk about that in a minute. I've dressed it up for him with some parsley and shiitake bacon on top today, and he's having red cabbage, celery, and then water, and garlic toast, and a plum for dessert if he cares to have a plum for dessert. Um, and I don't know when he'll get here. I phoned and he wasn't there, so he's somewhere in between, one would imagine. Um, anyway, I'm going to talk about these wonderful treats. Remember I showed you they, they were like this? Well, when I was served um, these, the, the one um, uh, at the Salvation Army where they were giving them away, he had unwrapped them. So they weren't in the boxes, they were just the tarts on the, on the serving plate that he had. He should have served them like this because when you open this up and you you have a whole set of these oh it's like gifts i love them and they're terrible because they're the ingredients are just not food so anyway um we ate all but one of this last tray so i brought one tray full to my friend bob and I hope that he gets them. You know, I never know because it could be his neighbors or just watch me coming and they're, they grab all the stuff. I don't know. It doesn't matter. In the grand scheme of things, I suppose. So anyway, we have one little tart left. And I've been resisting, but wow. That's hard, because they come in perfect little gift boxes, even. So, what a treat. Whoever was designing this really knew what they were doing, because old-fashioned. I mean, you think, oh, this is, is going to be a good treat, like my great-grandmother made for my grandmother, and she was a little girl, and this is going to be fantastic. And you look in the ingredients, and you're like, no, nothing old-fashioned about that. And, but... You know, they have the little windows, so it's like you're looking in a, a an old-fashioned, you're imagining some Victorian bakery with the little windows, right? And then you open this up, and you get a gift box. Fantastic. With its own little window right there. Whoever designed this, I should have went into advertising or something somehow, because I'm really thrilled when I see people pull it off like that, because... Honestly, the finished product inside is not nearly as exciting as the build-up. But, I mean, the build-up is so exciting that it makes the treat irresistible, right? You want to you wanna finish this off and go grab another box. <laughs> and it's not food. This is food. The chili is excellent. Okay, I'm, I should talk about the chili. So the chili is... Um, Let's see what I put in here. Well, I did a black bean sort of thing. So it's a black bean chili. I don't like kidney beans. I like black beans. James likes kidney beans, so he didn't get kidney beans this time. Um, my dad always made his chili with kidney beans in it, but I don't like them. And uh, I've used tomatoes, quite a lot of tomatoes, and corn. I cut the corn off the cobs because this time of year where I am, there's a lot of corn available and celery and I put I minced up some green onions and some yellow onions for this and some garlic and quite a lot of cumin ground um what else did I put? oh a little bit of oregano so like maybe I'm going to go four times the cumin as the oregano. I don't 
put that much oregano in. Put a lot of cumin in. And I put quite a lot of ancho chili powder because when you add sweet, you can amp up the heat. So um, a chili is always good. My dad always made his chili with brown sugar. And it was the best chili I'd ever had until I made this bowl, this pot full of chili um, with half apple juice from my tree. And um, I'm using the pulp from the apples to make my um, little patties that I put in the toaster, like sort of ish pop tart ish, but um, uh, with psyllium husk powder and stuff, it's good. And I get um, a medicinal dose of cinnamon when I have four of those patties, which I also get a heap and whop of psyllium. So, I don't know, I think it's good. It works out for me. And, uh, oh, bell peppers. I put quite a lot of bell peppers in here too. You know, it's really hard for me to see what I put in there, so I'm just going to have to try to remember it. But I, th I think that's it. Oh, some sea salt. Okay. Now I read this book. I don't know if I've talked to you about it already. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Now I did bookmark a few pages. Um, quinoa, mango, and black bean salad is page 48 is pretty much uh, like every other Mexican sort of salad you've had. But, um, because I was planning on using up some limes. But, anyway, the... This recipe book is a, a good example for what not to do if you realize that you can't handle gluten products. This, what, um, Carolyn Byron has done, has substitute, she uses a lot of sugar, and uh, she uses a lot of starch. So she has gluten-free pasta on page 89, corn flour, tapioca starch, potato starch, masa harina, brown rice flour, xanthan gum, sea salt, and eggs. So, um, I mean, when you look at that, you're saying, okay, well, that one doesn't have sugar. Well, why would pasta have sugar? Anyway. Um, but it has all of these starches in it and like quite a quite a bit and really like the starch is going to work in your in your body the same way as sugar does so you're still getting that insulin response um, it's it's not a healthy healthy move so I wouldn't recommend that cookbook unless you want to compare with say a raw vegan cookbook which um, there's a lot of healthy raw vegan cookbooks out there there's a lot that are way too high in fat as far as I'm concerned but um, if you're wanting to go gluten free this is gluten free this is gluten free. That's gluten free. That's gluten free. That's gluten free. Just not this. And this is the least healthy part of this meal, right? Um, this chili is vegan. There's nothing. It's not raw vegan. It's chili. It's hot. Um, well, it's probably not. It's warm now. Um, James would think it's hot still. Um, but yeah, just look into what the gluten containing things are and work from there. You don't need to load up on sugar and starch, which aren't healthy choices, just to avoid something else that's not working right in your body. It just doesn't make sen any sense. Speaking of unhealthy choices, I am drinking black tea instead of green today because the green tea I have is, I don't like the taste of it. And um, this was round, so I'm drinking that. But I just want to spend as much time in my garden for the next 
few days as possible because um, it's supposed to go down to zero on Thursday night. So I'm going to lose everything. It's going to be the end of the beautiful garden come Friday morning. It'll just look hideous. So I'm going to try to move these guys inside because I love them and they look so beautiful. And uh, you know, it's funny, I noticed there was a morning glory blossom on the top of my lilac bush here, which is really high. It's like, that one's almost as high as, well, I'm exaggerating, it's not as high as the peak of the house, but it's higher than, it's about high as the middle, middle part of <laughs> the peak of the house. It's definitely as high as the porch. So that one's pretty tall. And the morning glory climbed all that high. I'm impressed. And, um, yeah, they just seem to go and go. It, there was one morning glory that climbed up my uh, cherry tree, and I was impressed with that. But this one, he had to travel a little ways to get up to where I saw him. He was, um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Nobody would care but me. But um, I, I didn't know they could grow so much. And these guys, I had no idea they could grow so much in one summer. Humongous. This thing's humongous. I love it. See? Wonderful. And all of those flowers, they're going to go. It's all going to be gone. There's a morning glory up that tree. You just grow everywhere. Pretty exciting.